Anglesey as one of the richest concentrations of megalithic monuments in Europe. Now we've already looked at uh, three of the uh, most impressive uh, passage tombs on Anglesey, those at Baclodiad, Trefignath and Brinkethley. Now although these were of great age, uh, the monuments are thought to have been used for burials for a relatively short period, perhaps just a few generations. Their significance as ritual sites possibly lasted much longer than their use as places uh, for burial of the dead. In this final video I'm going to uh, take you to three cromlocks on uh, the island. There were once about 50 of these scattered right across Anglesey but now there are only about 20. Now these have long been associated with the Druids and pagan ritual but they're really nothing to do with the Druids in origin and were constructed about 3,000 years before the Druids arrived on the island. This Druidic association is a more recent phenomenon and was possibly due to 18th century antiquarians and archaeologists who uh, dug the sites, interpreting the origin of the sites incorrectly. Although the Druids connection with the island is strong, there are no known sites of stone circles on Anglesey. All the uh, monuments we're going to look at in this video date from the Neolithic period, which was about 5,000 years ago. At the end of the last video we were at uh, Ker Leb there. So I'm going to begin this video just up the road at Badawa Burial Chamber. And then when we've been there we're going to come back to the main road, go all the way around up the southwest side of the island and arrive near Rosniger and visit the Tinawath burial chamber which is just there in the corner of that field and then carrying on into the more central part of the island we are going to go to Prasadford burial chambers that's like a double burial chamber similar similar to Trefignath that we saw near Hollyhead so we're going to have a look at that and then that will complete this video and also this series of videos on ancient Anglesey. So here's the satellite image of Badawa and uh, if you remember we were at Kerr Lab on the last uh, video so we go up this lane along here and just in this field here is the burial chamber and that's it there as you can see there are sheep in this field and that was the case when we visited as well we visited the uh, burial chamber in 2010 and as you can see from the photographs uh, the occasion of uh, our visit was accompanied by a large number of farm animals in the field surrounding the uh, the fenced enclosure where the burial chamber was. So I wasn't able to get as close as I would have liked to and I certainly didn't get the sort of photographs that I would like to have got. But um, those that I did get uh, I'll, I'll put up anyway and you can have a look at the, uh, at the small burial chamber. It's quite a small one this is. Uh, it's never been excavated this site and uh, it's uh, a small polygonal chamber uh, and it's characteristic of the Neolithic period. The capstone is about 8 feet long and 6 feet wide. It has a low upright stone on the east side and this is thought to mark the position of the entrance passage. The next one we're going to look at is Tinawath Burial Chamber and if we leave Llanfilog by the main road and then take the first left on the way out of Llanfilog we go along this lane here and there's a lay-by just there there's also one there and just through this field we walk up there and that's the Tinawath Burial Chamber. 
A 19th century account suggests that Tinaworth was once covered by a round cairn. The monument was excavated in 1936, but very little was found to provide a precise date for its construction, although fragments of beaker pottery and a flint arrowhead of early Bronze Age were found. Its form does suggest that it was constructed in the Neolithic period. This burial chamber is located about a mile from Rosniger. And as you can see, it's got some modern supporting brick pillars underneath, stone pillars underneath, because there's a big crack in the capstone. And it's in the corner of this field, which usually has animals in, but it looks like it's uh, it's uh, mowing grass. But it's an impressive monument yet again. Okay, so we're starting a little bit higher up. This is the main uh, A55 dual carriageway going across the middle of Anglesey. We go across that here, up to the crossroads at Treffer, and along here, not quite as far as Bodadern, and we're looking for a little lane that takes us off where we can park by that farm and in this field here is the Prasadford double burial chamber so that's what we're going to have a look at now. Prasadford is a double burial chamber but unlike at Trefignath where the chambers are contiguous these aren't connected. The two chambers here are separated by a gap of about seven feet indicating that they were always separate structures. The southern chamber is the best preserved with its capstone still in place, supported on four upright stones. The north chamber has collapsed, but the capstone and supporting stones remain, although these are no longer upright. It is said that in the 18th century, the tomb provided shelter for a family of squatters. Just before I close the video, I need to just uh, give a couple of uh, credits to uh, the resources that I've used in uh, the commentaries on the, the four videos. Uh, the first one is to this little booklet that uh, is obtainable 
on the island from uh, information centres and it's the the CADA Guide to Ancient Monuments on the Isle of Anglesey and this has been used uh, as a reference uh, guide and also the maps that you've seen have been taken from this. The second one is this uh, DVD that I bought on uh, Anglesey. I got this from the uh, island's uh, main information centre and uh, it's quite a, an interesting um, little documentary that covers quite a few of the sites we've looked at and more besides. Um, so I can recommend that but I think you probably only pick that up if you're on the island itself.